Welcome home and welcome to Sweeter Than Honey. Will you pray with me? God, help us to be good caretakers of your creation. Help us to appreciate the beauty of your nature that you gave to us. In all that we do, as those who are set to be caretakers, help us to do so with love. Help us to care for this earth that you have created so that we all may flourish. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's word for today comes from Romans chapter 7, verse 1 through 13. Romans 7, verse 1 through 13. We'll be reading from the NRSV. Please carefully follow along and hear the word of the Lord. Or do you not know, brothers and sisters, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only during that person's lifetime. Thus a married woman is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives, but if her husband dies, she is discharged from the law concerning the husband. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she belongs to another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from the law, and if she belongs to another man, she is not an adulteress. In the same way, my brothers and sisters, you have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to one another, to him who was raised from the dead in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions, aroused by the law, were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are discharged from the law, dead to that which held us captive, so that we were enslaved in, so that we are enslaved in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the written code. What then are we to say? That the law is sin? By no means. Yet, if it had not been for the law, I would have not have known sin. I would not have known what it is to covet if the law had not said, You shall not covet. But sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covetousness. For apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. And the very commandment that promised life proved to be death to me. For sin, seizing an opportunity in the commandment, deceived me, and through it killed me. So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy, and just, and good. Did what is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin that was working death in me through what is good, in order that it might be shown to be sin, so that through the commandment, sin might become sinful beyond measure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here we have Paul again expounding upon law and what law kind of means in our lives. And so it's very interesting, right? In the book of Romans, Paul kind of says this whole big thing about righteousness and law and kind of takes that part by part and kind of breaks it down. And here Paul's talking about law. So what is law? And um, here when Paul says law and mentioning of the law, we're not talking about government law. We're not talking about civil laws. We're talking about the Old Testament laws, meaning the laws that kind of God gave to the Israelites uh, while at Mount Sinai and while they were traveling, um, that God, the law that God kind of gave to Israelites, hey, when before you go into the promised land or as you are my people, this is what I expect you to do. And so the laws, the kind of things that call us to do, uh, what God wants us to do. And also law can refer to basically the word of God, right? What God, the things that we are kind of, we need to do, the good we need to do, uh, and kind of the law that kind of, um, that we serve, uh, that we that we carry out, uh, that God has kind of stuff for us. So um, Paul says the law is binding to a person only during the person's lifetime. Which means that kind of when we die, it seems that when we go to heaven, you know, we don't have to be bound by law. Uh, You know, we'll be made new, we'll be renewed, we'll be uh, rejuvenated, we'll be... um, We'll have new bodies, and and so now that we're in heaven, you know, we won't need a law to kind of tell us what the right thing is to do, Uh, and therefore we'll be able to do the right things because uh, 
we will want to do what is right because that is joy and that is that is what really matters when we're heaven. On the other hand, when we die and we go to hell, we, there's no need for love because now we're kind of condemned to to uh, to eternal hell. And so Paul's saying, you know, when you die, um, you're not bound by the law. So the law is here on earth, and they have a purpose. And the same way, right? When a when a woman is married or a man is married, you know, they're kind of bound by to one another until what. Does, what do we do when, when we get married? Till death do us apart, right? Till death do us apart, we will love each other. We will care for one another in sickness and in health and poor and rich and all that. Same way, the till death do us apart, law will be bound to us. And so it says, now you have died to the law through the body of Christ, right? And so in verse 4, in the same way that till death do us apart, Paul's saying, look, when Christ died, he died to the law. That means now you don't belong to the law and you belong to who? You belong to God. You belong to God and you bear fruit for God now. Because while we were in the living flesh, verse 5 says, he says, our sinful passage, passions were around aroused by law, meaning uh, they were they were kind of pointed out, they were kind of highlighted by our law, and because now and what we did was, the members of the church and what all of us did was, we kind of bared fruit for death. We continued to commit sin, but now we're discharged from the law, as Paul says in verse 6, and now which law and death kind of led us to be captive, now we're enslaved to what? Nothing, to newness of the Spirit. And he says, you're not in the oldness of the written code, newness of the spirit. And so kind of Paul says, you know, you might think, oh, does this mean that law is bad? Does this mean that we don't law? And Paul says, in verse 7 says, you know, is law sin? No, right? He says, we don't know, we didn't know sin. We wouldn't have known sin if it wasn't for the law. So law has an important part in using and telling us what sin is. But Sin, at seizing in every opportunity, kind of used this law to produce all kinds of covetousness, right? So, he's saying that because of sin, we, we kind of use this law through us. We kind of use this law to even commit more sin. Kind of, kind of see now, if we, oh, this is sin, oh, kind of, our sinful passion is like, oh, I kind of want to do this. And what happens is the very commandment that promised life to us proved to be death to us. It deceived us and kind of killed us. And sin, that's what sin did. And so what Paul's saying here is, what basically law says is, look, law says you have a hundred things that you can't do. And, and, And law says you don't do this. But law also says you cross the line once, you are condemned to death. Because you have sinned. And so, law is holy. The commandment is holy, just, and good. God gave it to us. But because of sin and what sin does to us, we use what God gave to us as good and we kind of corrupt it. And so, in verse 13, Paul says, Did what is good, then bring death to me. No. It was sin that was working death in me through what is good in order that it might be shown to be sin. So that the, through the commandment, sin might become sinful beyond measure. So Paul's saying, this law is good, but it's because of us, our brokenness, we've kind of taken this law and we've kind of, you know, really taken advantage of it. We kind of corrupted it. And now Paul says, now the law kind of does more harm than good to us. And what we have to do is, God, what Paul says, we, we're broken from that now. We're made new. We're newness of spirit, right, it says. He says, now we're not under the law, we're under God. But still, the law points to what is sin. The still law points to us what is bad. And But yet, now we're not bound by it, we're bound to Christ. And that is the life we live. Now we follow law, now that we follow law, not to be safe, but once again, as we, we are already saved. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the law, what is good, holy, and just. And we apologize that because of sin and our brokenness and our shortcomings, we've taken it, we've taken advantage of it, we've corrupted it, we used it for our own good, and we've kind of also have not kept it. So God, we ask that you would forgive us and be with us. And as we continue to live, may we live under you now, Jesus Christ, who died for us. In Jesus Christ, and we pray. 
Amen.